Today's episode is brought to you by Skillshare. I've been hiding in Jason's spare bathtub for about a week and a half. <laughs> oh, I don't think he'll notice. Oh no, he found me. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bad Flashes. Today's episode, I gotta tell you, it was an afterthought. 100% didn't plan, wasn't in the Bible, was never gonna do it. Afterthought. But then you know what? I saw the results of this film and I was <laughs> I was blown away. Ortho 80 is here to stay. How do I put this lightly? I love these shots. I would take it to dinner on a first date and marry it right then and there. Get down on one knee and say, please, thank you, be mine forever. Little rushed? Yeah, maybe. Lust? 100%. I've never felt this way about a black and white film right off the bat than I do about Ortho 80. Well, maybe Pan F, but <laughs> we'll get to that in another episode. But honestly, this is good stuff. But you might be asking yourself, Caleb, why Ortho 80? What made you pick it up? Well, let me set the scene for you. My brother Chase and I decided to go buy more film because <laughs> apparently I didn't have enough. Also, I had never been to this photography store before, so I kind of felt like I had to leave with something. But as I gazed behind that counter, I saw it right there, Ortho 80. It was whispering to me, saying, you sweet and subtle monster, try me, use me, abuse me. So I did. <laughs> But now let's fast forward a few hours when Jason actually tracks me down from LA and decides to save his contacts T2. It didn't need saving. At first he was kind of pissed off about me not asking to borrow the camera, but then I just said we should go get some sweet, sweet barbecue and then he was completely fine with it. And then we made out. I mean, it made up. <laughs> we made up. We're friends again and all was back to normal. Bros before contacts T2s, I always say. Also, I promised we would shoot at magic hour, so that, that kind of eased the pain. But before we dive way too deep into Ortho 80, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an all-in-one learning community to help your creativity blossom in a new direction. And they have tons of classes to choose from. One class that I really, really enjoyed was Charlie Clement's class, Fun With Colors. It's all about picking unique color palettes for your design and illustrations. I know. I'm aware I wear all black, but I love experimenting with different color palettes and adding them into my videos. And the great thing is some of those classes are less than an hour. So go ahead and use your lunch hour to learn a new skill. And the best part of all, there are no ads. So you can let your creative juices flow while you binge your favorite classes. For the first thousand people who use the link in the description below, will receive a one month trial to Skillshare's premium membership. So what are you waiting for? Let's go take some classes together. Okay, let's go shoot some film. So you might be asking yourself, what's Ortho 80? Well, it's one of the oldest types of film that's in existence. Like basically when cavemen were taking pictures, that's this is the film that they were using. But not many companies make orthographic film anymore. Most black and white films today are panchromatic films that can see all the wavelengths of light. But orthochromatic film is only sensitive to the blue and green light spectrum. So you don't have to put on the red light or sell your body to the night. Ortho 80 is one of the last orthographic films in today's lineup and is made by Ilford. It's an 80 speed daylight film or if you're like one of seven who shoots tungsten light, then you want to rate it at 40. Now there's this place outside of my hometown called Farley, Kansas. But this place is kind of special because I've actually always wanted to shoot it. The town is just so picturesque. And deep down inside, I knew this was the time to shoot Ortho 80. So three dudes armed with three cameras hit the town of Farley.
One of the first things you'll notice when looking at some of these images is the natural bloom of this film. This is the reason why I fell in love with this film. I haven't seen a film react this way without adding a promise of my own. And it's not just the bloom that gets me all hot and sweaty. The overall tones of this film look fantastic. The images are naturally kind of contrasting, but the midtones still have a lot of detail. Honestly, the way this film reacts to light makes me want to just melt into a puddle, a messy puddle. Okay, 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 let's talk price. Because if anything, that is the biggest downfall of this entire film. For ortho 80 and 35 millimeter, it's gonna run you 11.99. Now that's kind of pricey, especially when you can get some great films from Ilford or Kodak in the $8 range. I mean, T-Max is 7.99, and that's one of the sharpest films out there. So in today's climate, when film prices are just going up and up and up, and Fuji's flying the coop, 11.99, that's hard to get behind. Which really sucks because I love the results. But while we were just talking about the grain, I do have to admit, Ortho 80 holds up very well. It's somewhere in the middle between T-Max and Tri-X. There really isn't an overwhelming amount of grain. I mean, it's definitely not a snowy mess like Street Candy. I love Street Candy, but I mean, it's, there's a lot of snow there. Now after the sunset, we decided to go back to my parents' house and do what we do best, drink beer, talk about film. What else is there in life? There's not a lot, that's about it. That's all there is. Yeah, you think I'm gonna shoot all this? <laughs> Without a doubt, my favorite images from this whole batch are the ones of my brother in the barn. Honestly, that's what made me fall in love with this film. The bloom and the lighting with the subject looks amazing. And yeah, I'm not just saying that because he's my brother. It's true, but still, all around greatness. So where does that leave us with this film that I enjoy more than putting chocolate chips into my banana bread? Unfortunately, Ortho 80 may not be the best all around film due to its price and the low ISO. I mean, 80 is hard to deal with sometimes, but in the right situations, it's a beautiful stock to put through any camera. I might not buy bricks of this film like I would Tri-X or T-Max, but I'll definitely keep a few in my fridge for a bright sunny day. Now that I know that I love it so much, I'm actually really interested to see what it looks like in 120. See if I can produce some of those same results that I did with 35. The thing about black and white to me is that it's really hard for me to tell a lot of them from each other. They just have similar characteristics. They're black and white and you can do things and stuff to each one of them. So it was really refreshing to see Ortho 80 just right out the bat being like, hey, guess what? I'm Ortho 80, I'm here to stay. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of Ortho 80 and if you would give it a try. I just, I didn't have any expectations from it and I was, I just absolutely was in love. Overall, I like Kodak's black and white films. They're cheap and just great. But you know, when Ortho 80 comes out of the sidelines saying, hey, look at me, I got some bloom. What are you gonna do with your life? It makes me feel good inside. Give Ortho 80 a try. Well, that'll do it for today's episode. Hope you join me next time where we're gonna get us some shenanigans and things and stuff. So, hope you join.